So when we're talking about design at scale and inclusiveness, what are we talking about really? Well, let's start with the three and a half million American adults who have actually never touched a computer. But they still use government services. Now, let's take on a little design project. Let's create a digital form. Let's make it for those three and a half million adults who have never touched a computer, and the 43% of US adults who have low literacy. Add to that people with low education. Between 25 and 50% of kids who enter the sixth grade do not graduate high school. This is really important for civic education. Now, layer on people with cognitive disabilities, short-term memory loss, things that might be age-related, but what we're going to see is a lot of cases that are not. They're related to serving in the military. 1.6 million, million, 1 1.6 million veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan. 670,000 of them have been given disability status. 150,000 have been diagnosed with PTSD. Give all these amazing people a touchscreen tablet and put a really important form on it. Maybe the most important form they are ever going to use. It's a ballot. Make this the only way that they can vote on the tablet. What do you do for people who have never used an app before? What does the ballot look like? How does it behave? How do you make it work for everyone? Everyone, no exceptions. My team at the, uh, the Center for Civic Design started with best practice, best practice from two large research studies that included best practice interaction design, best practice visual design, best practice on instructions. All of this was based on data. And we hoped to fill a gap in voter education. Then we tested and redesigned, and we tested and redesigned, and we tested and redesigned. We kept doing this. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> Our process ended up being all about stripping away the best practice to simplify. After the first session, we took a lot of the words away. Then after a couple of more sessions, we changed some of the interactions and took those away. Then, after a few more sessions, we changed the wording because we'd finally taken away so much of the craft that people could actually tell us what they were getting stuck on in an articulate way. Then we tested and redesigned, and we kept doing it with real users in 33 sessions. One round was on a paper prototype. One round was on a digital prototype. And all together, we had at least 20 iterations of this digital form of this ballot. And when we were done, the people with low literacy, the people with short-term memory loss, the people with low education could vote. They could vote the way they intended, privately, and independently, maybe for the first time ever. So much for best practice. Um, <laughs> best practice said embed user assistance, include illustrations about how to mark the ballot, put in help to prevent people from unintended skipping. And we did all of that, and did it help? Well, no, it actually didn't help. 
um, because there was one body of best practice that we had neglected, and that is about 60 years worth of technical communication literature and research that says the way that people figure out how to use te technology <laughs> is by uh, yelling over the wall and saying, hey, how do I use this? They don't use the instructions. They don't use the help. They just don't. But because lots of best practice said that we should do this, we did it. And when we put it all in, this is what happened. Distractions actually came from the illustrations and from the content about the offices and the candidates. People were derailed by amazingly subtle ambiguities like the word choice. And they had problems with getting back to the form from an error message. There are conventions for this, but basically conventions are enforced learned behavior. But remember, our people had never used computers before. People got stuck, absolutely stuck, on the wording on buttons. <laughs> the labels actually needed to be wordy and telegraphic calls to action, every single one of them. Shortcuts were not going to work. There's no submit button in our ballot. And now I'm having trouble navigating my primitive paper. Um, so testing at every step really made a huge difference. Observing real people and reacting to their frustrations and the questions that they were asking was huge. And what we got to, in the end, is something that we call plain interaction. And by this, what we mean is the fewest, simplest steps with maximal focus on the user's immediate next interaction. One moment at a time, flowing together for an excellent experience. So we started with best practice and conventions and standards and expertise, we thought. And voters with low literacy were the, intent, were the translators, the interpreters of our intent. Through their translating, we got a beautiful, beautiful thing that we now call the Anywhere Ballot. They taught us, those fabulous people with low literacy and low education, that we were fooled by best practice into believing that we knew what we were designing. And in the end, these voters handed us our best practices and said, this is not good enough. And we are grateful to them. Thank you.